Well, hey there, everybody. It's uh, It's been a little while since I've done a video. I just wanted to do a update so everybody knew that I was okay and alive. Um, it's been busy, and uh, if you remember from any of my videos about my chickens over here in this area, um, you'd recall that I had uh, 300 foot of wire fence that I'd put around their whole area so they could free range and they got eaten and so on and so forth. So. Um, still got my two chickens, they're doing fine, um, and I showed in another video how I expanded um, a run for them for real cheap, and um, so check that out if you haven't, like a hundred bucks, and it gives them a bunch more room. I'm going to do one more expansion, and then I'm going to get two more chickens, but it's not why I'm doing this video. I just wanted to say what's up to everybody and show y'all kind of what I'm doing. So I've taken down that 300 foot of fence, which was um, anchored with T-posts every 10 feet, 6 feet or so. Um, and a lot of people like to work with T-Post, but you know, if you're going to get the pounder, you're going to get the puller. So if you got to move any T-Post and if you're going to get a stretcher for the wire, um, those things add up to a lot of money. And so what I did was I did all that myself. Um, I did, I did buy a driver. It was like 20, 30 bucks, not a big investment, but as far as pulling these T-Post, um, since I'm doing it, um, I wanted to show y'all. I've pulled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I pulled like eight T-Post, and I've probably got, I don't know, 20 more to go. And it's really not that hard. Um, if I look like I'm red or sweating, it's because I just ran three miles. It has nothing to do with me pulling these T-Post because this is not that hard, I promise. Um, so what I did was we had that monsoon yesterday from the hurricane and so the ground is really nice and moist and damp so it's the perfect time to come pull these t-posts out so well, let me just show how I do it and hopefully this helps somebody out who doesn't want to spend a ton of money on getting rid of t-post so let's see um, I will set y'all right here and hopefully Whoop. Hopefully this will give you a view of what I'm doing. If I can get my camera to stay on this tree. There it is. Let's just turn this. All right. Well, hopefully I am in frame. I recommend putting gloves on. I don't a lot and I pay for it. So just slip you some gloves on. And again, I don't know how difficult this will be where you live, depending on if you have, you know, what kind of soil you got or how hard the ground is, but I waited till all that rain from the hurricane. And hopefully this one is like the other ones. I don't know, but this is how I've been doing and it's been working fine. Unless you hit a tree um, root that's grown or something like that. What I do, and be careful because T-posts will bend if you put a lot of force on them, but I just lightly will push forward, backwards, side to side. Forward, backwards, side to side. And then I'll just kind of do it real fast, do it real fast, and then, oop, a little circular motion too. Comes right out the ground. Nothing to it. And those are, uh, five foot T-posts that were about a foot and a half to uh, 18 inches in the ground. So it can definitely be done without a puller. Um, I know people have fabricated all kinds of pullers out of two by fours and chain and rope. You can look those up on YouTube if you want. Um, plenty of options if you don't feel like doing it manually like that. But um, I mean, that worked fine. And so far, all the ones I've done, like, it would take longer to set up a puller and pull them out the ground than it takes for me just to do that. So that's how I'm gonna do the rest of these and it should go as smoothly, I hope. Um, so wish me luck, but I haven't run into any problem except for one route that was going across the, uh, the blade on it. And so I just had to work around it. I mean, no big deal. Um, so, and then as far as a stretcher, honestly, what I did was I just took a two by four that was about four foot long. Um, it was eight foot cut in half, made two, two pieces that were four foot long. And then I just took uh, nut bolts and two washers on the outsides. And I just literally sandwiched 
my um, my fencing in between the two two by fours, sandwiched them in there, put my nut and bolts on, tightened it down real good, and then I had um, a rope attached. Atta uh, <laughs> I had a rope attached. Um, I had a rope attached to the top and bottom of my two by four, so it came at an angle, and then attached a um, come along or pulley system, whatever you can come up with, ratchet system to attach that around a tree, and then just pulley it, stretch it, and then I attach it to my T post. But on this one, I'm not bothering with stretching it. Um, I'm stretching it by hand um, while I'm wiring it in, but uh, I'm not stretching it. It's not going to be used for anything load bearing. It's not going to be used for cattle or sheep or anything like that. It's just mainly what I'm doing is I'm just sectioning off the main part of my backyard, like my immediate backyard around my house so that I can let my dog out on the back porch. He can do his thing out in the yard and I don't have to worry about keeping an eye on him because if you know Charles, he likes to uh, follow his nose and explore the neighborhood a little bit. Um, and so the other neighbors have a dog and I don't really trust it. So I don't really want him ending up over there and in a dog fight and I gotta go smack somebody around. <laughs> Just kidding, but no, I'm not. Anywho, um, so that's what we're doing. That's what we're up to. As you can see, I haven't shaved in a long time. And this is me sha not shaving for a long time. For me, uh, this is all I can grow. Um, just grows in all white, trashy, Joe Dirt style. Um, <laughs> I always said, well, maybe next year I'll be able to grow a beard. And uh, here I am, 31 years old, and this is what I can get. So <laughs> I'm envious of you people that can grow beards at like 15. So be happy. But that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. That's what's going on. I'm going to do some uh, more videos here shortly um, on some things. I just needed to touch base with everybody real quick while I was in the midst of some yard work. And uh, oh, FYI, I got three white eggs in my house from my chickens. If you ever notice your chickens laying white eggs, it will panic you at first. Uh, just be advised. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, that means your chickens have bronchitis, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, it also can come from stress. And that's what happened to my chicken. One of my chickens started laying white eggs for three days. Um, I was out here pulling down all this fencing and listening to copious amounts of metal and very loudly right by their chicken area and I didn't think about it when I did it. Very irresponsible chicken parenting on my part. Um, apparently my chickens don't like Iron Maiden. Um, <laughs> whatever, you know, I can't please everybody. But So that's the last step in a chicken production of their egg is the pigment being put into the egg so if anything disrupts that at the end of the cycle you know that can cause it also as people say bronchitis can cause it but my chickens are fine they're healthy nothing wrong with them they just got stressed out because I was out here making a bunch of bunch of racket so um, payback because they always make racket but uh, but that's it that's where we're at that's what we're doing um, hope everyone's doing well staying safe um, hanging in there I'm enjoying the end of my vacation uh, which is mainly just doing house stuff so uh, I'll be seeing everybody on the next video, I hope. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would very much appreciate it. And I promise I will come up with some more content and I'm figuring out this whole editing process. So I'm gonna come up with some better videos and we'll be able to do some more things because I'll be able to compartmentalize and chop and clip and whatever those technical terms are you people use nowadays on the YouTube, because I don't know, but uh, I'm figuring it out. And uh, Thanks to uh, a, lot of, a lot of people I've met on YouTube um, have been very forthcoming and helpful trying to assist me with my technical endeavors and I very much appreciate that and the shout outs I've gotten on some channels. Thank you all so very much. Y'all are helping the cause tremendously and I will hopefully return the favor as much as I can. Um, so I'm not going to get long winded as I usually do. Uh, so let me cut this now. So thanks, stay safe, and I'll catch y'all next time.